Okay, guys, I'm going to go through the external exams from 2022, last year's exams. Uh, firstly, the multiple choice section. Um, best advice I can give you here is do not leave any blank. Clearly, you're not going to get a mark if there's nothing uh, answered. And if you're not sure, you know, maybe try and eliminate one or two, narrow your choice down, give yourself better odds of getting it right. Um, if they're straightforward and it's just content knowledge, I'll just go through them quickly. If they need explaining, I'll try and explain them for you. Question one, identify the type of reaction that occurs when ethene undergoes polymerization to form polyethene. Ethene is an alkene. All alkenes obviously have double bonds. When they join together, the double bond opens and they simply add together. There's no second product. This is addition. Structural isomers are compounds of the same molecular formula, but they have a different structure or another way of saying it, a different arrangement of their atoms. Redox reaction, iron is clearly displacing copper from a copper compound in this reaction. Iron is, the, is being oxidized, it's going from a zero to a plus two. Uh, copper two plus is the oxidizing agent. Iron is the reducing agent. Let's see what they want. So Fe is oxidized and Cu2 plus is the oxidizing agent. Hopefully these are straightforward at the moment. If I think it's tricky, I'll spend a bit more time on it. Question four, the pair of reagents that will form a glycosidic bond are two monosaccharides or two carbohydrates. They would be, of course, glucose and galactose. They would form the disaccharide lactose. Question five, phosphorus pentoxide is prepared by burning phosphorus in oxygen, and they kindly give you the equation. They then ask the percentage yield of 10 grams of P4O10 is produced when 0.2 moles of P4 and 0.2 moles of O2 are reacted. Okay, this, this is not a multiple choice question. I know it is, but clearly it's worth a lot more than one mark because there's a, a lot of steps needed to work this out. Okay, so effectively 10 grams is being produced, that's our actual yield, but we want to work out what the theoretical yield should be. To do that, we look at the two reactants, 0.2 mole of each, but they react in a 1 to 5 ratio. So effectively, 0.2 mole of P4, this is going to be surplus. The oxygen is going to be all used, it's the limiting reagent if you like and only a fifth of that would be used. So when 0.2 moles of oxygen produces the product, it's a five to one ratio, so 0.2 moles here would produce a fifth of 0.2 moles or 0.04 of a mole. That's the theoretical molar yield. We need that in grams. So we work out what the molar mass of P4O10 is, I'm hoping that's pretty easy. Phosphorus is 31, 4 times 31. Oxygen is 16, 10 16s. Add the two together, that's the molar mass. If you multiply that by the 0.04, you will get the theoretical yield in grams. Put your 10 grams over theoretical yield, multiply by 100, and that will give you 88%. Equilibrium concentration of A is given and B is given. You see A is more than B. Um, A obviously is turning into B. And the delta H for the reaction is greater than zero, which means it's an endothermic reaction. It's positive. So if you decrease the temperature, you are going to favor the side that will increase the temperature, which is the exothermic direction. So therefore, the system will shift to the left when you make this change. Now, if the value of this before was 2.8 and that was 1.2, then effectively A is going to get bigger and B is going to get smaller. And that means A is the only possible answer for this one here. All right, all of the other ones clearly are indicating it's moving to the right. Question seven, okay, so compound X has to be a carboxylic acid if it reacts with an alcohol to form an ester, and that same compound X would form an amide from an amine. Carboxylic acid. Question eight, how will the system respond 
to a small amount of aqueous alkali being added? Um, okay, the answer here given by QCAA is D. And the logic being, when you add the alkali, the hydroxide ions, you will remove H3O plus ions as water, and that effectively will then cause the system to shift to the right to oppose the change. Now, they're treating this as a buffer question. And what they're saying is a small amount of alkali will cause the pH to remain the same. That isn't correct. The bottom line is you can't add alkali without the pH going up. The fact is a buffer is designed to resist pH change. It won't stop pH changing. So to be honest, the answer B is a more correct answer. But because they are treating this as a buffer and the small amount there is the clue, they're saying the pH remains the same. All right, so I don't like that answer, but it's QCAA's answer. Uh, they shouldn't have given you a choice like B at all. Question nine, naming a compound. First of all, count the longest chain, four carbons. That means it's a butane. It's got a chlorine and a fluorine on carbons two and three. If you want to go alphabetical, we might as well go numerically in the same order. So it would be two chloro, three fluoro, butane. Indicators. Indicators, as we know, are weak acids where the molecule is one color and the anion is a different color. When they're in equal numbers or equal concentrations, you're going to get a midpoint of that color change. And that means HIN and IN minus will be the same concentration. Uh, we have a galvanic cell with the zinc and copper uh, half cells. And the first question says, what travels through the salt bridge towards the reduction half cell? Well, hopefully you know that the reduction half cell is the copper one because zinc is more reactive than copper. So zinc will give up electrons. They will travel through the outside circuit to the copper. Zinc is the uh, negative electrode. It gives up the electrons. It effectively um, is the anode and it's oxidation taking place there. And here we have the cathode where reduction takes place. So effectively, as reduction is taking place, copper ions are gaining the electrons that come from the zinc and turn into copper. So the, con the concentration of the positive ion in this half cell is decreasing. And to keep the solution neutral, positive ions will travel from the salt bridge into this half cell. The positive ion there, of course, is the potassium ion. The zinc electrode um, is oxidized, it's the anode, we've already said that, it donates electrons to the copper ions at the cathode. Uh, the Ka for an unknown weak acid with an aqueous concentration of 0.12 and a pH of 3.2. Again, I don't think this is a suitable multiple choice question because it involves several steps. Um, okay, so the Ka would be H plus times A minus over HA. We've given the concentration of HA as 0.12. And then on the top, the H plus concentration will be 10 to the minus 3.2. And the A minus, of course, will be exactly the same because it's a one to one. So 10 to the minus 3.2 squared divided by 0.12 is equal to answer C. Mass spectrum for compound X is, has signals at these values here. The value at 72 indicates the molecular mass. That rules out the alcohol because that would be 74 and the carboxylic acid would be 88. So it's got to be either the aldehyde or the ketone. And the fact it's got a big peak at 43 is telling you it's the CH3CO unit, which is only present in butanone. Amino acid structure, molecule contains an amine group and a carboxyl group. Oxidation of manganese in MnO4 minus, oxygen's minus two, total minus eight, one left over, plus seven. The redox reaction here is C because it's the only one there are oxidation number changes. Chlorine is going from zero on the left to minus one in HCl and plus one in HClO. 
oxidation numbers are not changing in A, B, or D. KB, KB expression for a weak base. Um, the products go on the top, so the ammonium ion times the hydroxide ion, so it's got to be C or D. And then on the bottom, the ammonia molecule, water, is not included. Voltaic cells are constructed with metal Q as one electrode and RST as the other. Now, if there is a potential difference, it means that the half cell um, on the left is effectively a better reducing uh, agent than the half cell on the right. So T is a better reducing agent than Q. And then Q is clearly better than both R and S. It's much better than it is than R, not so much better for S. So the order would be T, Q, S, R. And last question 20 is about polypropene. We are seeing the syntactic form here, where the CH3s are regular, but they're opposite sides. Uh, the one where they're regular on the same side is called isotactic. Uh, if they're random, then it's atactic, basically. So A is our choice. And you do need to know a little bit about them. The uh, syntactic and the isotactic, because of their regular arrangements, are both crystalline, higher melting, and atactic, because of its random arrangement, is lower melting and not crystalline. It's used for things like packaging. Okay, guys, that seems to be that. Let's stop that.